Hi and welcome. Today we're checking our live trading bot or the live trading strategy we are using for Forex trading. This is a strategy that we have coded and deployed on the cloud using Amazon Cloud Services. A quick reminder, we optimized the strategy using historical data and the backtest showed positive equity movement with around 60% in returns for three months of trading. The strategy relied on two moving average curves to detect the trend and the Bollinger Band to generate entry signals in the direction of the trend. We ran back tests on historical data using Python. We fine tuned the stop loss and take profit distances using the average true range to account for market volatility. Okay, so what are we doing today? Well, it turns out that during the two previous videos, we have missed few details that are slowing down our trading bot, which started positively for the first two weeks but now it has been three weeks it's not doing very well what if there is a way we can improve our results take a look at this candle fast moving average is above the slow moving average so we are in an uptrend the candle opened below the lower bollinger band curve so this was our entry signal and this was a good trade it closed quickly and we made some profit but then there was another signal same technical situation however our bot didn't open a trade at this point and this was an excellent opportunity that we have missed so how can we improve the efficiency of our system and that's not all we run an optimization algorithm on historical data to get the best stop loss and take profit parameters. But these were obtained using data between 2019 and 2022. So at that time, we considered that the same parameters providing good results over three years should also work well for the future. And that's not entirely false. However, what if we tried to optimize the strategy on more recent data or actually on the most recent data? Before we continue, if you are interested in the strategy details, the Python code, the backtesting approach, and the live trading bot as well, I will leave the links for the previous videos in the description below. So you can go through the details, download the coding material, and use these for your experiments. The first improvement we will be using is the RSI to confirm the trend. Notice how on this example, the RSI is mostly above the 50% line, and this happens right where the price is climbing in the positive direction. The RSI is usually faster to pick up the changes in the trend compared with the moving averages. It uses a different formula, but also because the length parameter is usually shorter than the moving averages. So we expect to avoid uncertain trends using the RSI as an additional filter. And for this, we will consider all the RSI values over a time slice window. So we're not using one RSI value or the most recent one for the current candle. We will examine all the values within a time slice before the current value. If let's say the last 10 RSI values are above the 50% line, then the uptrend is confirmed. And in the opposite direction, if all the previous RSI values are below the 50% line, then we can confirm a downtrend, provided that the fast moving average is also below the slow moving average. This is a typical example showing a situation where a losing trade could have been avoided using the RSI confirmation. This candle opened above the Bollinger curve and the fast moving average color in red is below the slow moving average, which is in white. So the bot considers this as a downtrend and this was a short position entry. Now, depending on the ATR, the stop loss was too close apparently and this ended in a loss because we opened this trade and we were stopped because the price continued climbing slightly after we opened the trade. To avoid these situations that usually happen at the end of a trend and during reversals, we can look at the RSI and if the last values are not below 50, then we don't allow short positions because the trend is not confirmed by the RSI and it looks like the momentum is changing towards an uptrend, which is the case right here. Notice that the RSI for the few candles was above 50, so it was around 55 up to 58 for this candle, for example. And in this case, we can't confirm the downtrend anymore. Although the red curve, the red fast moving average is below the white moving average. So we need those two indicators to confirm the trend. The Bollinger Band is acting very well, so we're not going to change anything. We just need something reliable to detect the trend and to avoid the zones where we have trend reversals or a change somehow in the characters. Another modification that we can apply to our trading system is that we will be optimizing the stop loss and take profit coefficients based on recent data. And to test this, we will use the same approach as we do when applying machine learning algorithms. We will be optimizing or fitting the coefficients over a time slice period, and then we apply a forward testing using the same parameters over the following time slice data. 
This way we are testing our model on new and unseen price data, since the fitting was only carried out on the previous time period. But in reality, this is not enough. To make sure that our system can generalize over a wider range of time, we can use a sliding window over the data. So if this was our first test, we can save the results like the return percentage, drawdown, and so on. Then we slide our window and we repeat again with a new optimization fitting and a new test, which also reveals new results that we can aggregate with the previous test. We keep doing this until we have gathered enough information about if our model would generalize over a wider time range. In reality, we would have to update our optimization part, for example, every two weeks when trading live using a bot, which means changing the stop loss and take profit coefficients based on last week's price movements. This way, the trading model will always have updated parameters following the market. You may call it overfitting, but as long as it works, then why not? And that's not all. We're not done with the optimizations. I still have some highlights about this live trading system. For those who have been following the live trading news of this system, I have been publishing some screenshots. You already know we had good positive weeks and also some negative weeks so far. And at this point, it's good to review our backtest results once again, just to manage our expectations. Notice the drawdown period on this equity curve and the maximum drawdown duration, which is around 3,805 bars. This means roughly 317 hours. So it's around 13 to 14 trading days or three weeks since we are talking about trading days where the market is opened. In other words, if the system is in a loss for three consecutive weeks, this is somehow normal according to our backtest. It shouldn't be as frequent. We might get one or two weeks of drawdown and sometimes maybe none. We will have have the perfect month where all the trades are in the positive or all the weeks or all the trading weeks are in the positive zone. That being said, any trading system will have a drawdown period. It could be a whole month ending in negative. It's completely normal. But most importantly, if we stick to the system by the end of the year, we'd have more positive months and the overall result would be in profit provided that the system is thoroughly backtested and it works on the long term. In the new version of our system, we are aiming to shorten the drawdown period and the value of the drawdown. In this test, the maximum drawdown is 2% with a maximum duration of 1135 bars. So it's almost four trading days. The full test was applied for almost 3.5 trading weeks. So it's almost one third of our trading time is in a drawdown period. There's one more improvement that we can apply on the trade management. We can use a break even approach. So when the price reaches half the take profit distance, we will close half the trade in profit and move the stop loss value to the position entry price. This way, if the price bounces back, we could keep half the position as a profit. And if it continues in the winning direction, then we will close the other half of the position in profit as well. This is called the break even approach and it usually limits drawdown values. And this was it for this video. In the next video, we will walk through the Python code with all these modifications and discuss the results. Maybe we can update our live trading bot and watch the results in action for the coming weeks. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.